Hello everyone, this is Christine Perret. Um, it is January 22nd, 2020. And it's my pleasure to be hosting this webinar tonight or today about the recent Computer Electronic, Consumer Electronics Show or CES 2020. And I'm here today um, with Pete Tortorici of Medtronic. We um, are going to be sharing with you for uh, some of the highlights that we found during the uh, during our time there. I spent a full um, three days, um, many steps, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Found it very very valuable, and that's why I want to share some of those highlights with you. But Pete had a, uh, of course, uh, Pete works for Medtronic, and he'll introduce himself in a few minutes. He had a a different set of goals. We were really um, both technology scouting, but looking for different things. <laughs> Our emphasis were in two different places. This webinar will be um, recorded and archived, and certainly you will receive the link at a further time. If you have any questions, you can put those in the GoToWebinar questions panel in uh, the GoToWebinar um, control screen and uh, we'll be happy to take your questions after our prepared remarks. So I it really uh, I chose this picture because it was cold and it was a very bright blue sky when I hit the um, the trail there in Las Vegas and I felt like um, I've been to CES maybe four times in the last 10 years uh, felt familiar, all of it did, but very, very big. Um, so, um, such huge halls, far apart, and um, I think last count there were 175,000 visitors and like 4,000 exhibit, exhibiting organizations. So, it's very, very big, um, and uh, you really have to brace yourself. So, what I do before I go to CES is I download the app and I go on the website, and try to filter a few things so that I make sure I use my time, uh, you know, for highest impact. But this year that was a particular challenge because there were so many exhibitors in the V this merged virtual and augmented reality ca category. Um, there were more than half of the companies that were listed in that selection uh, were really showing augmented reality, in, in my opinion. I think I, I certainly um, might have seen 170 or 180 companies, and then of course saw some that didn't have just uh, pure augmented reality. But my focus really was on trying to find everyone who was showing AR and spending a little bit of time with them to learn what was new. I found the app a little hard to use, um, but um, you know you do the best you can. Certainly, getting better each year. Within the app, I marked certain companies, especially area members that I wanted to see, and other familiar names. There probably were maybe um, I don't know a third of the companies I knew by name. Before I'd gone, I'd also tried to scan all the. Uh, headlines and see if there was anything I really couldn't uh, miss. So, and then the night before the official exhibition opens, there was the Samsung keynote, and everybody was talking about this um, AR glasses that had been demonstrated in the in a consumer use case. But what I thought was really interesting is that it was a combination of a consumer wearing some hands-free AR display, these glasses, but at the same time connected uh, to an exoskeleton. And that's uh, something that, in fact, one of our area members, Sarcos Robotics, is very interested in doing. And I found that fascinating. Uh, I also attended, so on the morning, the first morning that I was there, I attended the keynote with Delta, the airlines company. It was the very first time that airlines had been the keynoter. And they introduced something that they called, uh, in conjunction with misapplied science, which I'd never heard of, something called parallel realities. And they also just briefly mentioned that you could have AR to help passengers find their seats in the uh, when they were boarding. Now, 
um, what I want, my main point with these keynotes is it was not necessary for us to define augmented reality at CES this year. In past years, I've always had to go through the kind of laborious process of explaining what it was, um, but I, I didn't need to this year. What was different is parallel realities was not something I'd ever heard before, and it's not part of my vocabulary. It's not an extended reality or a mixed reality. Um, it's an, a different technology that allows you to, many people standing in front of the same display to see something different. Um, so I hope you'll be able to find out more about that. One of the uh, things that I did, I spent a, um, uh, maybe an hour or so also uh, cruising through the innovation awards. Um, so once I, I got into the exhibition halls after the keynote, I saw that um, Fusix had a, a, a received an award for its uh, eyewear that is waterproof. Now, in this case, they're showing it as a swimmer's goggles, but I thought for, you know, there are enterprise use cases where people are maybe not underwater, but they're in very, very wet environments. And so this could be applied to enterprise use cases as well. There was another innovation award granted to a company called uh, AbEye, that is to help um, uh, people who are dys dyslexic. And then um, there was another item among the, probably there were maybe 30 prizes for these innovation awards. And if three of them are augmented reality related, that's pretty high percentage. This one was about a brain sensing device that could control your AR, VR display with your mind, with your brain waves. So it has a, um, some very powerful capabilities and clearly some potential for us in the future. So once I got into, uh, you know, I'd already studied and I, who I was going to go find, there were, it's so huge, I, oops, I see a typo, I did find um, area members in the exhibition halls and then I was on my way looking for augmented reality anywhere that it showed up. I saw a lot, I uh, didn't spend that much time in this area, but very popular area was digital health and wellness. I think you'll be hearing a little bit more about that from Pete in just a minute. There were um, a lot of ways that you could use augmented reality for consumers, but I think these would also be valuable for people in a workplace situation, maybe a medical application or trying to monitor uh, workers' health and well-being. Uh, but the things that they're showing are better interfaces. They, um, the technologies that they're showing also have a longer battery life and much more intelligence built into them. So very, very exciting uh, developments there. I also saw quite a lot of new optics technologies, um, a lot of same waveguide optics, but they're getting better and better. And so that's a really important trend for our enterprise uh, AR adopters. Um, there was a company showing a, a projection AR with 3D using a, a holographic um, projector. Um, I saw also some very good technologies for uh, improved visual slam, uh, very, very fast. So they had this moving object that, well, they, what they had is the camera mounted on the end of the spring and they would swing it around and show you how it could follow um, where it was swinging to and fro and right and left and very, very interesting demonstration. I think we're gonna see more and more of this. It's um, software that can be built into our future display devices. Uh, I, bear, I come from Switzerland, so I uh, dropped in on the Swiss Pavilion where I found two of the 25 companies were showing specific augmented reality platforms, uh, both uh, software, but there's some, uh, there was a piece of hardware, C-Real, I think, a light, way, light field display for use in projection AR. So uh, as a general pattern, I like to go and see the country pavilions because there's a lot of small companies showing their stuff in there. Uh, coming back uh, to the brain interface, 
it was uh, there. Here was this company showing how if you you could put a um, a very very simple strap, an EEG headband on, and control um, your your AR display. And um, there were, of course, probably dozens of new displays that I had not seen before. Some I have seen before, like the Nreal, um, but I'd never seen a mad gaze. So there was about as many of the devices that were targeting mass market consumer users as there were devices that had some weird shape and looked like they had more sensors and maybe higher precision for um, enterprise and industrial use cases. So on the left in this picture is a um, helmet. It's been a, a, it's an AR display. It's been attached to a firefighter's uh, mask for for um, breathing. And then also on the side, on the right hand side, uh, the new uh, Real Max is the name of the company, a Chinese company that's been working in displays for quite a long time. Again, here on the left was a consumer uh, model, a Chinese company called O Glass. Um, on the right is Third Eye Gen, it's another area member showing their, this is the first time they were showing their production scale uh, AR glasses. Vuzix had a very nice booth. They were showing both the um, M1, M400 and the M4000, both designed for industrial use cases. Um, just so many different eyewear. So probably, as I said, I saw on the order of um, 20 or 25 different eyewear vendors, uh, really interesting variety. Then uh, I spent the last day visiting the exhibition halls for transportation. So in general, uh, those are like the heavy machinery. I thought, oh, I'm not going to find anything here. And I was very surprised indeed how much augmented reality was on display. Um, again, most or all of the transportation oriented augmented reality is built into the windshield as is shown on the right hand side. This is a Bobcat windshield and they're showing how the Bobcat has sensors and it can tell the user how much weight is in the in the cup or the, the um, dish in the front for construction, how, how deep the blade is going and lots of other parameters are shown um, on their overlaid for the driver. And then, of course, on the upper right-hand side, sorry, left for the Bobcat, right, um, automotive AR, these built-in um, AR visualizations were great. Also, um, in the transportation kind of hall, this enormous uh, north hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center, I also saw a flying car. Um, and again, uh, prototypes, just uh, mock-ups, there were two of them, this one by Hyundai and another one by Bell, I believe, the helicopter company, and massive interests in these um, new prototypes or concept vehicles. And I believe that you know many times they're going to be showing augmented reality and not only for the passengers, but also um, for the people who are designing and building these things. There's a lot of different ways in the transportation industry. At the same time, in that same transportation industry, even though it's not uh, AR uh, technology or visualization, I saw a lot of technologies for LIDAR and visual positioning systems and just the general field of reality capture which dovetails so well with autonomous driving and autonomous vehicles. Um, so lots, I went through so quickly because I want to make sure there's time for Pete to go through the things he saw and kinds of things he learned. Um, I want to wrap up by saying I went into the central courtyard, saw a couple of companies there, Google, Hexagon, and I got to taste the Impossible Burger, which has made the headlines since then. So this is a, 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 a plant-based uh, meat. <clears throat> so this is the kind of stuff that you see when you go to CES and uh, in addition to augmented reality. 
So now I'm going to pass the baton over to Pete Tortorici, who's going to speak about what he saw and uh, the highlights from his perspective. Pete? Okay. Thanks, Christine. Um, so for folks online, uh, my name is Pete Tortorici. I work at a medical device manufacturer called Medtronic. And so typically what you know, like what I was explaining to Christine and Mark too, and and they know me, but um, just in general, that about uh, maybe if you go to the next slide is is really we usually send a group of folks, and so we have a few uh, people from our company that attend uh, every year. I don't necessarily attend every year. We try to rotate this through. So I just kind of wanted to say that that for technology scouting for Medtronic, it's a about 10% of my job right now is is in the AR part of the industry, which I'll focus most of my comments on, obviously, for this crew here. But the 90% uh, of it is really we're looking at other technologies, too. Um, and so that's why we have a wide range of people that usually attend this show, from our uh, research and technology people to whatever. So I'm going to try to go through some of the main themes and, and echo. I don't want to maybe necessarily echo the same things as Christina has, because I saw – I, I'll say I'm aligned with some of the vision and and some of the things that she's seen um, seen there at the show. But I, I'll just talk about the main themes and how I think it connects to AI. So one of my main things um, uh, that I saw was uh, data collection, um, which you know AI, AR is just really a, a representation of that data collection um or the data representation so you know one of the things i saw for automotive was just collection of data from both your vehicle itself but then um with the uh mobile eye um, company that's really owned by intel is they basically said we are going to map or they've mapped all of the roads in europe right now and they anticipate having all of the roads in the united states mapped by um the end of next year and then with the hardware that has in the company as changes are made new roads go in uh, roads are changed expanded um, that those are updated real time um, and I think that's going to lend itself to you know autonomous vehicles and such too so uh, maybe go next Christine please um, one of the things that I saw was uh, parallel reality from Delta um, this was one of the I mean there was I think they had uh, appointments, they, they, they had to do it by appointment. Uh, the wait to get through, if you were just sitting there, was about an hour. Um, basically, the way you look at it is, um, this is the thing I gravitated to from the AR, which was um, the, the concept is basically once you scan your boarding pass, um, you go to any monitor uh, within um, the airport. And they plan to roll this out in Detroit in, uh, as a beta test in the summer. Um, that when you go to the monitor, it's going to display just your information like you see here. Um, the technology behind it and trying to understand a little bit more, I think um, I need to do it. But uh, I think my, um, maybe the next slide I have after that's kind of my, my uh, analogy to it, which is uh, if you ever seen the movie um, Field of Dreams, uh, there's a scene where Kevin Costner and, and James Earl Jones are sitting in the baseball stadium and they see this message up on the scoreboard. Um, they're the only two that ever saw that message. And obviously I'm not talking about that AR is paranormal, but uh, um, that it's very similar that, that they saw the message, no one else saw it. And so that's really the concept from Delta is it's really um, your travel experience is going to be very personalized um, through the use of AR. And it's not using glasses or anything. It's using um, basically I would call a version of projection. Um, if you go to the um, next one, Christine, one of the things that we saw or that I saw from an AR perspective is uh, using industrial light guide systems to um, that interact with the user. So, for instance, this table here is uh, an assembly table where um, if you have your parts all set up. Um, basically, this will walk you through um, an assembly step and actually tell you if you've done things right or wrong, whether parts are correct, um, uh, walk you through the right steps. Make sure, for instance, if you like on the left, the two green uh, parts, if those are a specific tool or a specific part, you can actually set those on there and recognize if they're the right ones or not. Um, so there's, uh, you know, it walks you through a very simple um, aspect here and it also does part consumption and say manufacturing execution systems 
So that's something that, you know, was looking was of interest that I, um, you know, stopped by to take a look, a closer look at as far as AR goes, um, you know, light system or um, projection AR. Mm -hmm. So if you um, go to the next one, one of the things that we looked at wasn't really AR, but it's medical related, which is um, a lot of surgeons will use a digital uh, loop or, um, and this isn't, it really isn't, I mean, um, projecting anything, uh, it, it can actually project things in the sense that it can give a surgeon um, more information as they're doing uh, procedures. So uh, the gentleman who's in the right picture is the CEO of the company, uh, walked me through both the ergonomics of the system itself are more uh, beneficial for physicians, but also the, the information that's being able to be provided to the physicians um, during procedures is uh, extremely beneficial. So that's uh, something else that I thought was very interesting. And, and you talk about taking AR to like, for instance, uh, surgical procedures um, and uh, the, adv the advantages of doing that. Now I'll comment about that a little bit uh, later too um, on another slide. Um, if you go to the next one, Christine, please. Uh, so echo Christine's comment was, um, I don't have, uh, maybe anything really sexy here to, to show other than there's a, what I'm seeing is a theme, or at least I saw as a general theme is the integration of, um, you're basically a brain sensing or, or integration of the brain with, um, augmented reality. Um, so for instance, being able to control or display information or move, um, using uh, interaction with, with your mind um, is now starting to become kind of an emerging thing that I saw in several spots. And this was just an example to give people an idea of what's there. Um, the next one, Christine, please, is, uh, I, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but, uh, but I think uh, I tried to show this as an example is that uh, I think to echo Christine's point is there does seem to be like quite a bit of hardware there also. Um, in variety of forms, both in, uh, you know, VR over on the left and, and some XR over on the, I'm sorry, VR on the right, XR on the left. Um, and a lot, to echo Christine's point, some new glasses and advertising a larger field of view and, and some things. So I won't spend too much time on this because I thought Christine had a nice slide to kind of highlight that there. But so there, and it was all intermixed everywhere too to Christine's point. It wasn't like there there was an AR area, but um there was AR and VR kind of built into a lot of different things, although it wasn't necessarily regulated just to the VR uh area of the convention, which to Christine's point was just enormous. Um to the next slide, um one of the things that we took I took picture of is that and it starts to get in is, is and, and an AR and, and VR, um, I call extended reality integrates into this, which is um, the, the point was in the health sessions was that uh, the, the model of health and healthcare and patient care is really evolving. So that, I mean, I think if you look over today compared to today, the future really is more patient enabled versus a, um, a facility in physician. Physician facilities are so involved, but a lot of information and data, um, the individual is going to be, um, you know, assuming more responsibility for their devices, their care, um, than maybe traditionally people would. Um, and I think the next um, slide I have on this is, um, if you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, it's just, it, one of the big things, and it's just a common theme was, we need all of this data. And not everybody has, no, no one has all of it. And a lot of people have some of it. So those folks need to com to collaborate and combine. I think the other part too, is I thought somebody made an interesting point was that, um, that, you know, everybody's worried today, or at least a lot of people seem to be worried about like what their carbon footprint is. And they're saying, you know, now they're worried about what their data footprint is because it's just, you know, Terra and exabytes of data that are gonna have to be collected and available um, and how it's managed and interpreted and everything is uh, one big theme I saw because, like I said at the beginning, you know, Intel's collecting all this data on roads and uh, exactly roads, and, the, and then all this data is is being collected in your vehicle. Um, 
today. And so, and in medical, it's all this data is being collected from your devices and everything that you do. So um, if you think if you've got a smartwatch that, that's monitoring your heart rate and, or even your blood pressure and things, where's that data going? How's it being collected? How it's being used? So that's just a major, major theme. Um, and then AR obviously takes advantage of that data. Um, so if we go to the, to the next one, I've got a few things. One, to echo Christine's point too, which we, we, we did a lot of this, we were walking around together, which was a lot of, um, so from the medical part of it, is a lot of um, elder care. Uh, basically collecting data. A lot of people had co data collections of, for instance, just basic uh, health monitoring, such uh, blood pressure, pulse ox, those types of things. Um, however, uh, you know, one other big thing I saw, which is is elder care. So, for instance, uh, sensors and smart um, smart devices around the home, uh, so that. Uh, basically, you can be away from maybe uh, elderly parents or siblings or somebody and um, being able to actually monitor and understand, are they okay? Um, should you be concerned? Are you worried? Or just being, have a peace of mind that, that everything is okay. Um, so if you go to the um, next one, Christine, please. Yeah, so this goes into kind of where it kind of goes into medical, which is 3D printing. So kind of in the AR part of it, which is being able to visualize um, anatomy prior to doing procedures, uh, there's a lot of AR work going on there. But complementary to that is, is actually um, doing a physical print of the exact uh, physiology of the exact patient that you want to work on. Um, and so Mayo Clinic, uh, or there's people that work with Mayo Clinic to actually print um, patient-specific anatomy. Um, and, you know, there's the fun stuff, too, on the right, which is the, the novelty 3D printing, um, but just showing the capabilities of these uh, tools to assist um, and maybe complement AR in a way. Um, so if you go to the next one, I think I've got just a couple more things, which uh, Christine and I attended the Innovation Series Summit where they uh, brought a few folks out and talk through things. Um, I mean, I won't highlight this too much because I'm, I'm running out of time here, but uh, you know, one of the things we talked that they brought out a gentleman that was talking about uh, Google translations and how they're trying to actually make that much smarter and, um, and to work on specific translations and, and actually make them more accurate. So I thought that was pretty interesting as far as a few of the talks there uh, from a high level to see what their trends were. And I'm anticipating another report being sent to me. Um, and then I think I got uh, one or two more things, Christine. Yeah, and this is just the fun stuff, right? It's the, uh, you know, the 8K TVs that everybody had, like LG, Samsung, uh, Vizio, everybody's touting their new 8K TVs. And, um, you know, they do look fantastic. So that's kind of the fun stuff. Right, you get to see it's like some of this. My kind of hamburger. Stuff. Yeah, this is the uh, like your hamburger. Just the like digital your hamburger. hamburger. <laughs> yeah, just like your digital hamburger. So, um, yeah, there was a, there was some fun stuff there too. I, I mean, I think the other thing I did see just as a comment was just tons of uh, sourcing people looking for distribution for all of their electronic cases and goods and chargers and everything like that. So. Anyway, with that, I'll just kind of conclude my general comments of what I saw, what I what I think I saw, um, and you know, it, obviously, if, if you illusion. get the chance, yeah, and I guess maybe the one thing I wanted to comment on is is if you do uh, get the chance to um, go, and I think the problem we face as a company, or at least I face when I talk to my colleagues, is because it's right after New Year, we really don't think about it until. Um, we, you know, we know CES is there, but we really don't think about it until Christmas time. And then we go, oh, we have to register for CES and go. And it's a, it's going to be a little difficult. Um, so the two things is be careful about sticker shock for um, hotels uh, because they're about uh, four to 10 X more than what they would normally cost because CES is the busiest time of year in um, one of the busiest weeks in Vegas. Uh, but the show is definitely worth seeing. Uh, there's It's definitely worth uh, maybe not on a yearly basis, but on some semi-frequent basis. Um, if you have the opportunity to send several folks from your company, it's well worth it uh, just because one person has no ability to cover everything in um, even three days. 
Um, and just and like so we're being talking. able to divide in concert. Go ahead, Christine. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, just like we're discussing today, you know, there we see things and choose to look for th different kinds of things. Um, so, so you know, so one of the, one of the things I think. Yeah, thank you, Pete. I, I want to go ahead and uh, head into a little bit to our discussion topics here. We're gonna just Pete and I are gonna chat a little bit about uh, those mm -hmm. trends. We showed you a lot of examples, but kind of thinking where are these going to fit into area member businesses uh, this year or in the future and and what did we miss um, so Pete do you have something that you think will impact enterprise AR this year did you see anything there that you mm. thought was going to be near term um, you know, the, the thing that I see that I think a lot of people are, or at least investigating on some end, which is the, um, which I think we overlook because it's, it's you know, the, we got all the glasses everywhere, um, is the projection AR part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and using, because to me, it's, it, when I look at that, that's, I mean, when I've seen that, that's, I mean, there's a lot of integration and things that have to get done. Um, but those are relatively, I would say, they can be made to be very relatively inexpensive systems. Um, they do have their limitations like everything else, but um, it seems to me that that's a, worth a second look as far as, um, especially if you're doing kind of, the, you know, the, it, for certain use cases and applications for assembly, it may fit in very well um, versus- I saw that um, example of the holographic Classic. projection. You don't have to have right. it just be 2D planar on a surface. You can, there's, it seems pretty near term to be able to do this um, 3D holographic projection and, and get away from everybody having their own glasses. Well, from my perspective, yeah. you know, something I think is gonna impact area members and enterprise AR in general in 2020 is just, the wide variety of new hardware for AR displays mm -hmm. that we're going to have that are going to be tempting, tempting to take a second look. Not, you know, not, not everybody's going to need glasses on their, you know, respirator because they're not all emergency responders or firefighters, but lots of new hardware, not just coming out of China, but um, U.S. companies and European companies. And if you think about 2019, it really was the year where it was just like not many options for eyewear for industrial enterprises. You have Realwear, Fusix, great for the you know monocular and to some extent binocular with Fusix. And then you have the Hololens, but um, you know this Magic Leap's not quite ready for prime time. People were a little cool on HoloLens in 2019 because of the announcements of the next version coming. But now I look at this differently and I think, oh my God, we're going back a few years where people had labs with 10 different devices and they're trying to figure out how to integrate and use all these different form factors. So that's something that I could imagine would impact us a little bit more in 2020 than um, than we had in in 2019. So we're going to see, you know, a third eye gen, real max, Nreal. More of these are in production mode uh, and available at at, at uh, relatively uh, reachable prices. They're not just developer kits. And then beyond. Yeah, and I think that's what I was going to. I think that's a good yeah. point, Christina. If I could say something uh, really mm -hmm. quick on that is, is that yeah, with the hardware, um, obviously the for industrial uses or at least you know, the price point's got to be right. Um, if, uh, if, uh, if you know if, if it's twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars for a set of hardware, well, yeah, people will get them and they'll, um, you know, they'll, they might get a couple sets and and to do some piloting or something but it's not going to be this massive deployment uh, compared to mm -hmm. something that might be a few hundred dollars mm -hmm. right 
but it, it, speaking of you know, the price point, they keep them kind of stable in that window, that developer kits in that two to three to maybe maybe up to five in some cases is developer kit prices. But what they're including in that kit keeps getting more complex, more powerful, smaller, lightweight, and better. So the price point's not perhaps moving a lot, but the capabilities of these systems is advancing rapidly. And I think beyond 2020, this uh, brain-computer interfaces hold a tremendous potential for enterprise and consumer, but mainly for enterprises. Because right now, our options are, thank you, you can use voice, you can use gestures for controlling AR experiences in a hands-free way. But we both know that really it should be multimodal and using your voice can be disruptive to others. The environment may be too loud. There are all these barriers to using just voice or just gestures. And wouldn't it be nice if you could just think about, I want to move this graphic. I want to insert something new. I want to click on that um, digital asset to get more information. And they're able to show that today. So it's. I, I believe we're going to get impacted by that um, in the not too distant future, maybe two years. You know, maybe it'll take a little longer to get in production devices. But I saw so many examples. I didn't show all the examples of the funny wires and stuff, but they were everywhere. Mm -hmm. that yeah, I think that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, it, it's a it's a good point. And I think as processing speeds get better and some of the connectivity and, and wireless, uh, uh, and then say the batteries too, you know, get rid of the wires and, um, you know, make things all, you know, eventually all wireless. And mm -hmm. I did see too, is a lot of the VR stuff, you know, that was there. There's still tons of gaming and there's always going to be oh. tons of gaming. Um, but I thought, you know, to me, it's like the, um, it's, I think it's, it, it's, interesting to see how AR is being integrated into other things, what such as, I mean, if anybody has a vehicle with a heads up display, right? That's yep. there, but how, the, but how, but how, yes, but how it's in, exactly how it's being integrated into uh, say a heads up display for um, uh, industrial, like for instance, like you said, like a Bobcat where the, the shovel is basically saying, Oh, Hey, you're digging too deep or, you know, so yeah. it's, it, um, basically, you know, um, it's integrating its way into other things without necessarily, like, say, a set of glasses. Like exoskeletons, they're integrating AR mm -hmm. as a user interface to tell you how much you're lifting, how long, where you need to put it. it it's mm -hmm. the guide for your load. Another thing that we haven't spoken about but saw a lot of was the advancements in robotics and drones. It's enormous oh, yeah. and they're not just for to they're ju not just toys for playing with they're very much um business tools uh for uh professional you know environments the advances in self um, yeah the robots and there just were mm -hmm. hundreds of them i didn't check to see how many companies were uh ticking the robot category but it certainly was um, a high concentration in one of the halls, and then you saw it dribs and drabs elsewhere uh, as they were going. I also really enjoyed yeah. seeing, I visited with some people in Corning Glass. I remember, uh, as some of you may remember, uh, five years ago or something, there was a very nice vision video, two-part vision video, a day in the life of glass. And I thought, well, why haven't we seen those people around? And I, I dropped in and, and found somebody who could talk to me about what Corning is doing in that domain. I don't share it here, but this is part of why I like going to CES and I encourage other members to consider going in the future is you meet people at that event that are um, there to do deals for sure. Like you said, distribution deals, partnerships, there's really a, a lot of emphasis on business development there, but you're going to you're going to see and meet some very senior um, uh, decision makers, and you can't always predict who's going to be there. You can walk into a booth and just um, start 
uh, start up a conversation with with some really important and and people you wouldn't necessarily have a chance uh, to catch. And I, I, I met up with um, M from Exxon Mobil. I met with a few other area members, uh, large enterprise customers when I was on the floor, and they were telling me the same thing. We don't come, you know, to try out the new games. We come because we can have meetings here that we can't have anywhere else. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, you know, the one thing I would say, and I told Christine this too, is I when I went to some of the booths too, I saw a lot of what I would consider, um, you know, if you ignore the snake oil, that uh, for instance, everybody's work, but if you look at the theme, so there's some things, you know, for instance, everybody's, uh, I think I see a big push on like, for instance, health um, and mainly sleep health. So, you know, if you kind of look at the major themes and say, well, look, this is an area people are actually trying to invest and try to understand more um, of how people can get better sleep. Now, there were people there selling, oh, fire gizmo and you're going to sleep well, right? Um, or there's tons of data collection. So you got to kind of say, all right, is this really real or not, right? Because it's, it's uh, you can, people can make claims for anything, whether they're maybe, maybe true or not, but um, but if you look at the major themes um, and say, well, look, this, you know, sleep and, and sleep health is, is a big concern of a lot of people, um, whether or not this little gizmo here works, there's 10 other companies that are trying to understand and how to help people do that. So to me, it's trying to look through and just maybe not discount certain things because they don't, you know, maybe they look a little too good to be true. However, if you look at the major themes and say, wait, there's, there's, 15 other people here within the small little area trying to address the same thing and say, well, wait a minute, there's something here and, and to try to understand some of those. So that was kind of some of the, the information I saw um, there. So. Um, All right. So I think the answer, would you go back is yes, it, but not every year. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, it's overwhelming um, in the sense that to me, it's, 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 if I could go every year, yeah, that's great. I, I like to rotate other people around the company through it um, and make sure that it's, it's not just me that we get. And then what we do is we bring it back and we share it, right? So that's part of our, what we do, kind of like here, um, I, you take a lot of pictures um, and... Um, Try to tell a story. Take a look. Try to... Yeah, I just say, what, what did I see? And, and it's always good for other people to experience that too. Um, like Christine says, there are people at our company that are interested in going there to have meetings they couldn't have elsewhere. But a lot of people are kind of technology scouting for various things. And for instance, they might see things that say, hey, I uh, saw something over here in the smart city that might be a technology we could use for a certain application somewhere else. And um, so those types of synergies, uh, even I'll be honest with you, actually, I, I don't have it in this deck, but um, I actually sent a picture of, of something I saw of to one of our human resources um, leaders in the company because uh, there's a lot of data intelligence on saying, well, I want to, I've got a, based on your experience and your career and everything you've input into your, you know, your employee database here at your company, um, we think that you're like a, if you're looking for a new job, you're like a 90% fit for this particular role based on all of our analysis of the data. Um, so it's kind of like a matchmaker, right, for, for um, employees, for internal jobs. And even, you know, you probably see how that fits with certain um, job boards that exist now. So mm -hmm. um, there's and a lot of innovation the, going on. Yeah, the broader theme, too, is all, all this artificial intelligence and machine learning is is mm -hmm. now beyond a fad. It's a, uh, we have so much data that the, um, the analyses are more reliable. We trust those AI algorithms more uh, mm -hmm. with more important uh, decisions. I mean, the thing where I see it, in, and the reason I'm mentioning all the AI stuff is the way it intersects obviously AR is that the, the, that we use the data. So it, it's not just, and then using it smartly. So the processing part, which is AI, AR, which is, do you want to, for instance, give you, give a person a, say a headset or a tablet or a projection that just dumps a ton of information? Or is it where it's like, are you giving the person the information they want at that time? And which is talks about how it would interact with, for instance, the brain part of it, which is, 
can I sense what the information that the user wants and only display that versus overload them with a whole bunch of irrelevant information. For sure. Uh, kind of like the, the, the Delta, the Delta information, right? When you go up to a terminal, my, um, you, you're, 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 what are you doing? You're looking for my flight, my gate, my time. Is it delayed or is it on time? And now you can walk up to a monitor and you're going to see just your information. Um, and which is what you wanted. So that may be being a kind of my analogous uh, and how it could be expanded into the whole or broader AR stuff in, in the enterprise. Okay, well, I wanna thank you, Pete, for taking the time. Okay, to I do have to drop and off. Deliver this, yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for your attention. Again, this uh, webinar will be archived and available on the area members portal. Thank you, everybody, and um, have a good day. This is uh, the Thanks, end of Christine, our Thanks, Christine, for hosting. Thank you. Bye-bye, Pete. Bye, everyone. Yeah.